let's start. So uh, today we're here with uh, Kevin Owaki, who uh, wrote a little book. So um, give it up for Kevin. Thank you. Wow. All right. Well, we've gotten past the uh, will anyone come to my birthday party stage of the event. So thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah, so thanks indeed all for being here. We are going to make this a very interactive session. In a sense, it's already Thursday and we want to keep this, we want to do some all sorts of allocation of energy and ideas and all sorts of things. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about this book. So, uh, Kevin, this is a handbook. Um, could you tell us a little bit, bit of an intro about this? Like, why, why did you write this? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've been working on the, the craft of, of book writing since 2021 when I uh, wrote Green Pilled, How Crypto Could Regenerate the World. And thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, basically, I've just like been working on honing that craft for, uh, for the last few years. And uh, I saw an opportunity to articulate what I see as the evolving field of, of capital allocation and... Uh, uh, if you could be on your phone somewhere else, that'd be great. Um, the uh, so like Gitcoin's uh, Gitcoin's been doing quadratic funding for years, and uh, we're going into a multi mechanism future. I I believe strongly, and uh, Gitcoin's now doing retroactive funding. And I'm also just a fan of Protocol Guild and Coordinate and Giveth and Clear Fund and the enormous long tail of people who are doing capital allocation in the space. And uh, so this book was an attempt to take a journey from present mechanisms, what exists right now, into future possibilities. So basically, I believe that blockchains will revolutionize the way that we allocate capital uh, because now we can send scarcity or financial value across a network of computers and we can program our values into our money with smart contracts. And so I wanted to sort of explore the design space empirically. So what's out there? What are people doing? And then a priori it, from first principles, how are we going to do it? And so this is this is sort of my attempt to, to do that. And um, it's it's going to be a conversation, I think, myself and the community that forms around the book in the future. There's a telegram group that is linked in the book where I expect and hope that people will pile into and give feedback on the book. Uh, the book was written in a whirlwind of 100 days, so it's it's not perfect. Um, I think that we'll pr like there's the aperture the aperture that's in my mind is publishing a second edition that's inclusive of other people's thoughts and mechanisms that i didn't include i included 35 mechanisms for capital allocation in the book which was like really a lot of fun to do research on but since i've started exploring it giving out it's the more. book to people uh, i've got 20 more <laughs> mechanisms to include in the second edition and that's because the space is evolving so fast and so so yeah, I mean, I think this is the start of a conversation for me about uh, how does capital allocation change as we move on chain? And hopefully if we cart cartography the design space and explore the best solutions and cross pollinate them, then that accelerates public goods funding and collective action in, in a way because everyone knows about everyone else. I think that I'm very privileged to have access to all of this stuff as the founder of Gitcoin and I want to democratize that access to other people in the space and that's kind of what the book and the community around the book is is designed to do so um yeah just saw a window of opportunity and and i shot my shot and I'm curious to hear what you all think when when you uh when you read the book mm. yeah and so you this is this book is not complete and indeed we're going to have some more conversations and Hopefully we can take some notes and get some more inspiration here for, for version two. But like for all the ones you already found, like you did this on top of doing 17 other, other, other jobs. Um, and so you did find this information somewhere, but where do allocation mechanisms come from? Like for people who are not even in this space, what do you mean with this? Like, um, is, this, is there a long history about capital allocation? Uh, how are get they invented? Does it do they come from out of a need? So could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Oh well, you know what I should have started with is just a definition of capital yeah. allocation. So tell us what uh, is it? <laughs> it just went off the deep end uh, really quick, which sometimes happens, you know. 
Um, sometimes <laughs> there's Gitcoiners in the front row that are trolling me right we're, now. We're uh, used to this. Like we work with Kevin, but for people who yeah. do not know anything about this, let's talk so about what it is. Capital allocation is a very simple concept. It's the process of deciding where and when you're going to spend money. And capital allocation can be, I'm going to repay my friends for a meal or I'm going to pay my taxes. At scale, capital allocation becomes a full-time job. Governments should be allocating capital to public goods funding. DAOs should be allocating capital to their ecosystems. And I, I believe that uh, basically capital allocation in the industrial age gets uh, captured by centralized gatekeepers. And those gatekeepers not only become power brokers, there becomes a power asymmetry between the people who are giving out capital and the people who receive it, but also they cannot, from the position of a central planner, possibly understand what uh, communities actually want. And so I see an opportunity for Ethereum-based capital allocation to be more democratic, more transparent, more incorruptible, more scalable, and more precise. And it's that design space that I'm really excited to uh, to lay out and, and put in front of people. And um, and so, uh, you know, the immediate use case and is the immediate use case is all these DAOs that have multi billions of dollars or, or tokens in their treasuries that don't know how to deploy them to their ecosystem. And and you know, to be clear, like I'm 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 in this to figure out how we do better collective action and how we do better collective sense making at scale with uh, crypto, but like. Gitcoin is my vessel for exploring the space, and so um, you know there are some like Gitcoin adjacent things here where we're going multi mechanism, and this for us is a way to explore the design space. But shilling Gitcoin does happen in the book, but it's secondary to exploring the design space. I forget what else you asked me. But. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's great. Um, and then, so when we're, you were just talking about funds um, being spent in the Ethereum ecosystem and also in the world that it's not always very efficient, do you feel like in the current, in what we're seeing right now in Ethereum, all these DAOs with a lot of money, uh, our own DAO included, um, are, are funds being spent very well? Like, or how can we improve this? You don't have to focus per se on our DAO, yeah. but what are you seeing wider as well? I mean, I think the biggest opportunity that I see in the greater world is governments that have these large bureaucracies that aren't very good at uh, funding public goods, and you know, at at worst, they become captured and or politicized in some way. And I think we can do better, more transparent, more precise capital allocation in the world using crypto and smart contracts. But uh, before we set our sights on the world's public goods, I think that we have to solve for our own public goods. And I would. I think that there's a thousand X more attention given to airdrops in airdrop farming than there is to working on public goods in the space. And um, if we can close that asymmetry, uh, the meta of airdrops and the meta of public goods funding and, and ecosystem building kind of like collapses. And you know, what if the airdrops were going to people who are working on open source software and public goods instead of the airdrop farmers? Like that's, mm -hmm. that would be the most tangible, immediate thing that if Gitcoin is successful and this movement is successful, we're able to do. And, and, and like, this isn't theory, by the way, like we're doing it with quadratic funding and retroactive funding and, and the mechanisms that are in the book. So, um, you know, I, I think that the near term opportunity is DAOs and then the long term opportunity is NGOs and, and governments. Yeah. So we have to start with ourselves first and then we can then we can move outwards. I, I saw actually a, a great tweet. I don't know who it was uh, from yesterday on all, all also someone saying like the we should have more mechanisms where you cannot just like buy the token or like get airdrop the token, but you actually have to do the work. You have to like really put in some work, do some things. We're doing it here. This is my little plug, like at the comments hub as well, where we have, we're using a, a version of a regen token and people can go clean out, the, clean up the park. They can do all sorts of things to get an ice cream that they can buy with the, with the token. So like having these mechanisms that people are rewarded for things that they do. So we have like retro PGF in the book is a way of doing this as well and like so this is the kind of things that you're thinking of right like how can we reward the people who are actually doing the work yeah yeah that's great to see because yeah in, in again like here we are here in the comments hub today and i i see these people all those volunteers working non-stop i actually want to just have a little applause for all the people who have been working non-stop uh 
And and I happen I happen to have a little bit of inside information, knowing that those people they're not gonna even go break even with this event because this is a regen event. We don't have a lot of funding because capital is not always very well allocated. So very concretely, when you even think of this, like what would you do? You would say like, okay, read my book, but very practically, like how how do they go about this? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Clearly, the answer is to use Gitcoin. And <laughs> Which which they are, are which they are for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that okay. So in in some ways, this book is a recognition of the limited ability of myself and of Gitcoin to traverse the entire design space, and um, an invitation to new people, new entrants into the space to explore the design space alongside us, leveraging the learnings of seven years of Gitcoin and sixty million dollars worth of funding on Gitcoin, and. Um, you know, we've released this thing called Allo Protocol that uh, for those of you who are skilled at reading between the lines, Allo stands for allocation. Uh, so it's a capital allocation protocol. And we've been working on uh, basically building smart contract component parts that allows people to spin up quadratic funding or retroactive funding or uh, other ways of allocating capital much faster than they would before. So uh, if we can explore the design space together, leveraging shared learnings and shared tools like the Allo protocol, then more experiments are going to blossom and more effective experiments are going to blossom. And so, um, you know, it's a, it's a roundabout way of not answering your question, but the, the, the true answer is that it's going to be a network based multiplayer exploration of the design space. And that's what I want to facilitate. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. Is that a liberating structure that you're doing? You're making a snap together? Sure. Okay. It's kind of like a tension allocation, like in a way. Yeah. So, um, it's all allocation. It's, it's all been. allocation, always has been, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So, on that note, like, how, how do we find those people who, who can help us build and find these solutions together like how how do you go about this very practically as um do you want do you want people to just like share it online is there a space where they can get yeah. together um great question so how do we spread this movement how do we accelerate the collective exploration of this mechanism design space i think that uh, everyone in this room is doing important stuff just by being here and just you know i'm looking at just around and seeing the different innovators in the room and i, and I just think that um, we already have a beautiful seed of culture and of movement of people who care about this. And I think we, we, we can accelerate that. The two things that I'll say that I'm, uh, two plays that I'm making and, and, you know, we'll see if they work is, uh, we're releasing the next version of Allo protocol at DevCon. And we really want to make the developer experience great by DevCon. And we'll be having uh, rewards for people who build on top of Allo protocol uh, and build the most innovative mechanisms on top of our technology. And so uh, we will be bringing the tools and the rewards and the culture to DevCon. And that, that's the next launch that I see happening. Uh, through Gitcoin, and um, you know, hopefully that creates a cascade of more people working on this space and innovating and, and pushing this movement forward. And then the second uh, answer, I think, which is more tangible and about today, is that uh, I, I think that uh, I would love for people to just read the book and, and tell me what they think. And I've got a bunch of books right over here. They're like looming, sort of like uh, standing there ominously. And I think it would be fun to figure out like. Uh, okay, so how do how do we allocate the books to the audience and to the Ethereum community? Yeah, this is not an airdrop today, guys. Just so you know, this is this is not happening. Yeah, We're doing something else. Well, I mean, I think the default like thing that we could do is like I could just say like grab a book and then be like chum in the water yep. and everyone would like grab it and, um, but like meaningfully if we were to if we were to collectively figure out how to allocate the books and to market the book, then um, you know, to reach the goal of of uh of spreading the word and and of spreading these inspirations to people how would we do that consciously and maybe there's like a design exercise we can do through the panel to figure that out like the only strongly held belief that i have is that if you're building a mechanism or you're an organizer in this community you should be getting a book uh and i also think that uh, through proof of participation everyone here should be getting a book but beyond that how do we spread the word about this vision and how we can do better collective sense making and capital allocation at scale to the broader ethereum community there's like 10,000 people mm. at ECC this year and the broader ethereum community is hundreds of thousands of people so you know how do we, how do we spread it outwards and well, I'll allocate the book 
according to whatever the consensus of this group is. Yeah, so like, like th let's definitely do that. We're gonna get a little bit interactive in a little bit. Um, mm. There's actually one third uh, way, well, or like an existing way in any case that already exists that I immediately have to think of, which is a, a talk that's, or a, a conversation that's coming up here tomorrow also at the Region Village uh, about the Gitcoin citizens, because we have a way of actually having our own community reward everyone who works on spreading the message of basically of capital allocation. So like definitely come by tomorrow if you can, because then we're gonna talk more on that. Um, but like before we go into a more interactive part, um, I wanted to still ask you like there, uh, this is not just you, Kevin Owaki, because you also always work with a whole lot of people. So are there some other people who contributed to this and that you kind of wanted to thank or have some words say on this book? What, what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that anyone in this room who's who's building the movement is either facilitating or building mechanisms. Thank you to you for uh, this. This wouldn't have existed without you. Uh, hope I got your work well, well represented, and if not, we'll get it collect uh, finished in the in the second edition. Uh, I want to give a shout out to An, who did the beautiful illustrations it, behind the book. Round of applause for An. Can you raise your hand? Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, Gitcoin is is a, my vessel for exploring the space, and it's evolved so much over the last seven years, from Gitcoin 0.1 to 1.0 to to 2.0. And I just want to thank everyone who's been along for the ride. I think that it's been a rocky ride in some places, and it's been an exhilarating ride in other places. And so, to Rena and Meg and everyone else on the Gitcoin team, thank you for uh, supporting this work and, and putting this all into practice. So thank you. Um, and and on the subject of Gitcoin, I just want to say that like Gitcoin is known for grants, and you know we help ecosystems build growth for themselves. But like I, I think that like uh, everyone understands what grants are in this space, and I think that capital allocation is like a, another like mimetic level of like a little bit more esoteric and, and technocratic and economist speak. And uh, but I really think that these little capital allocation mechanisms are going to be the engines for grants programs in the future in Web three. And so uh, you know, Gitcoin equals grants, but uh, you know, inside of each grant program, there'll be a, a little capital allocation engine. And so um, it's really. I love taking like the theory and the the deep like vitalic brain like alien crystal of beautiful energy and mechanism design and putting into practice at Gitcoin. So this wouldn't have existed without Gitcoin. And uh, just super thankful to everyone who's been bearing trying to figure that out along with me. Yeah, deeply agree. Um, having having been for three years at the DAO, like there's all these people even who moved on and spread their energy and, and talent in the space. Like so many people worked on, on getting yeah. where we are right now. Right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I was thinking um, we can we can maybe like introduce like the fishbowl idea and like go from like start there. But uh, is there any final thing that you like, what, what, what do you, have you any final thoughts on the book itself? Like, what's the end game for you? Any, any, anything else you want to share with the audience before we go in that? Yeah, thank, thanks. Um, yeah, it's just to get it into people's hands and to you know take the constructive feedback that I get and and launch a better second edition and it'll be this iterative exploration of the design space. So uh, my only ask is that if you get a book, please read it. Uh, and if you don't read it, if it just sits on your shelf, then contribute to Gitcoin Grants Round Twenty One, which is coming up in August. Um, I'm not giving them out to be paperweights and yeah, let's just, let's okay. party, let's celebrate. Cool. So with that, um, we're not, we we were first thinking of maybe doing like breakout groups, but now we just thought like we have this beautiful place here, we're touching grass. Um, and so we were thinking, <laughs> <laughs> well, some sort of yeah. like, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, so this is, we're gonna do a little fishbowl. So um, he, here, who here knows what the fishbowl is? Okay, yes, nice. That shows that there's a lot of coordination people in the audience. So the, the concept of a fishbowl is like we have four, like the, this is the fishbowl. Fishbowl, there cannot be too many fishes in. So we have like maximum three fishes swimming around. And so they can come a fourth fish, but like when, then it gets a little bit crowded and that's your sign of like slowly like moving out. But so what we want to do is just like ask some people here to join the conversation and talk about us. Like what are some ideas that you have about how we can make this better? Like Kevin will for sure ask some questions and facilitate here. 
And then um, I will probably also move out myself a, a, a little bit, but I could maybe give yeah. people a book when you think that, that they should get one or redo that idea and whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. So yeah, TLDR on the fishbowl has come up if you want to be part of the conversation. And then if you've been up here uh, the longest, then please leave once the fishbowl gets crowded. Make some space. And, uh, I think the only exception will be me because it's my the birthday party, so deal with it. <laughs> This is the main fish. He cannot yeah. leave the bowl. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we'll just keep talking and you're now invited to take this chair and this chair if you're in the audience and you have yeah. something to say. We would love to elevate your voices. Um, while we wait for someone to do that, I'll just talk about the actual uh, stuff that we have to allocate here. Uh, so I've got... Uh, so this, go in the meanwhile, go for it. If you have a question yeah. or anything, just go up there. Thanks. Uh, so I've got... 200-ish books uh, in soft cover here, and so that'll uh, be enough for this audience. And then I've got like 100 pairs of socks that are in this obnoxious but cool pastel design that I've created. I've got about 10 shirts um, for men and 10 shirts for, for, for women that are in, this, uh, in these colors. And, um, and I have one of the, oh, the posters. We have posters f for... <laughs> That are that are because they were made by the Tree Gens team are not made out of trees. They're made out of edible material. Uh, so, if you're hungry or you want to put them on their wall, you can. Are they are they made out of mushrooms? Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, we have to by the end of this fishbowl, I think, figure out how to allocate the books and the the swag to everyone. And um, I'm, maybe I'll put a time cap on it. It's twelve. 57 right now uh maybe at 115 we'll start winding down the fishbowl and we'll just give out the books and, and yeah. just party from there so i, I don't want to keep you guys sitting here too much waiting for the book that's but. like even one of the questions that we can have like how should we allocate the books that's a very tangible question yeah. so well, I, I think yeah. the question is like how do we build this movement and how do we allocate the books is like a sub question yes that. totally but, um yeah uh, let, let's go. Let's, so we let's have Gus here. Gus, how are you? Yeah, I, my, I have a question that is really on point to this because I, I see that there is no, no Rina, perfect. Can you give them a book on their way out, please? Thank you. There is no perfect mechanism, right? And I guess like in the future when we will have this plurality of mechanisms, like the whole ecosystem will lead to, uh, yeah, setting the the best the mechanisms for the right community, for the right culture, and so on. <laughs> But my question is right now, uh, what, what methods or what methodology or what are even further mechanisms we can use to, um, let's say, to bring some healthy to unfairness that we can see? If Jitcoin, for example, I have noticed that it, uh, in so many cases, has become like a popularity contest, yeah. in which people are actually working more in the grant and in advertising yeah. everything that they want to get, rather than the impact per se. Yeah, uh, great question, and I appreciate that you all will come to me with those very valid criticisms of quadratic funding, and um, I think that like. The awakening that I've had is that there's not going to be one public goods funding mechanism because they're all good at like a certain a, a certain subset of public goods funding. And I think that like the plurality of mechanisms that we're building, plurality of grants programs is uh, is going to be different things that are good at one thing and one thing only, but they're all compatible with each other. Like quadratic funding is really good at democratic capital allocation, but it suffers from this Keynesian beauty contest problem of only the visible work is actually what gets rewarded. And if you're good at shilling on Twitter, that matters more than if you're actually good at developing open source or whatever it is. And um, so I, I, I think that we're gonna see mechanisms that uh, that uh, basically solve for these problems in different ways. Like I think that the uh, optimism exploration of retroactive, because retroactive, it's easier to know if a public good was good in the past than it will be in the future. That's like one thing, but they also have badge holders who are experts in these ecosystems that actually know things about them. And now they're doing like impact-based voting, which, uh, ideally would like even if something isn't visible to you visually but it's part of the data the mechanism will still reward it because it's looking at the impact data as a as the reward mecha mechanism so um i guess it's a long way of saying that uh this is a part of the reason why we want to steer gitcoin from being qf only to being multi-mechanism is that there's going to be a lot of small tools that uh 
that do one thing and do them well. And it's going to be about exploring that design space and being a plural. Like we shouldn't have mechanism maxis the same way we have token maxis. We should, we, we should be pluralists when it comes to the mechanisms. Is, th is that fair? Or is that too like abstract? No, for me, it's fair. For me, it's fair. Um, and I have a second question. Uh, consider the, the current mechanisms that are, that are out there. Is there any recipe or methodology for any specific community or purpose to select their mechanism for allocating capital? Yeah, I mean, um, the book is one way to explore. Uh, if you just want someone who's going to do it for you, come to Gitcoin and we'll give you what we have. Uh, which is primarily grants mechanisms right now, um, as it should be. And if you're a developer and you want to build the latest and greatest mechanisms, use Allo protocol. Uh, and uh, we're really trying to set up other people for success in, in building this stuff. So it just really depends on if you're a program designer, uh, use Gitcoin and we'll have all this stuff bottled up for you. If you're a developer, use Allo protocol, we'll have smart contracts and boilerplate code that, p that you can use. And then if you're a mechanism designer, come to us and we'll help you distribute the mechanism to our network. So we want to kind of be like a accelerator for all of the people who are doing stuff here. Okay, I'm, I'm going down uh, now. But my question was more regarding the cultural part of it, like... Sorry, the what part? The cultural part. Oh, cultural part. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know, I'm a community in Venezuela that I, I, I'm, I'm, I can yeah. gather like a lot of funds from Jitcoin, for example, and I can do a further capital allocation there. Yeah. Like, according to the culture that we want to implement, how can I decide if quadratic funding is better than conviction voting, or for example? Yeah, um, I think one area, well, so I believe firmly that we've got to make it work for EVM-based communities before we can go out and do it in the world. Um, and, uh, but like maybe people will find a way to take the tokens that you've received through crypto and deploy them locally in Venezuela, did you say? Uh, like, I, I think that like building web two funding experiences is an area of innovation that people are focusing on and shout out to giveth who i think is really pushing pushing that forward and uh yeah i mean the ultimate the ultimate stuff of this at scale will be like optimism gives out a hundred million dollars to a bunch of us and then we do sub public goods funding in our community and then it, it like spirals outwards from there i think that'd be really cool if we stack them into each other like uh what's that carl you called it like a champagne like the champagne uh Exactly. Yeah. But at each level, we can like programmatically allocate it to the things that matter most at that holonic level. Anyway, thanks for the question. Wh who's next, Chris? So, um, so I'm going to. Yeah, I, I have a question to Chris Fish. I just took off my shoes so I could touch the, gra touch the, touch the grass. Touch the grass. But it's the, the chair is a little bit too tall for me. Um, so, first of all, to Gustavo, um, I've actually recently published on my GitHub on, uh, sort of a. Uh, the opposite funding mechanism of what we're doing, which is something like you could have a fund where you allocate, you say like, here's the problem, like you might, okay. It starts with like, let's run and let's run NLP or an LLM over our Discord channel and say, this is the problem we want to solve. Anybody who's interested, here's a pool of X number of tokens, whatever, $5,000 and 30 days, whoever wants to come to that group comes to the group. The group has to decide how to allocate the funds. The group has to come up with a proposal at the end, with a budget at the end, and the group. So, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I was just going to say, if you're walking out, you're welcome to grab a book on the way out. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, you allocate a fund for a team to self-formulate and figure out how they distribute the fund, and then at the end of 30 days, they give you a proposal and a budget, and then that way you're more inclusive of the people rather than having them compete against each other. And you can you can find that on my GitHub and. It, it's got several phases in it. So that's like a kind of a, I have no idea how to program that. So I just put it out there. I have a question for Chris Fish because you were talking about not breaking even. Um, you know, it breaks my heart. Like you guys are my people and this is our home. And there's no transparency about what's missing. It's not like, because when you say break even, it's not even paying yourself a decent wage, right? And on the other hand, we have like whatever meme coiners anyway. So how do you think that transparency, and also for you, how do you think that ownership, because like now we've got a physical good, but there's no limit to how many digital books you could, like how do you think that ownership and transparency um, could fit into really 
showing people that we're part of a commons. Because, again, with the ice creams, it's like if, if you said, hey, we're all going to take the trash out now, I'd be like, yes, but I'm lactose intolerant, so the ice cream doesn't speak to me, right? Like, how do we start thinking about ownership and transparency, like that's for both of you, as part of the sense of being a commons? Yeah. The, those are some great questions, not easy, the, not the easiest ones. Um, I can just start by saying that I, um, well, I, I give a, call, uh, a talk on on that this week, this week as well. And it, for me, it's all, my mantra is, right now is like, first start with yourself and then move outwards. Like it's, it's the thing that I've been putting layers and layers of in. So I think um, on really already on a, a personal spiritual level is like all the people here working as well need to take care of themselves. Like there's a lot of people in the activism space who are very like self-sacrificing and that's because those people are very aware of the pain and the hurt and the issues in this world. But like first start by healing yourself. So this is not like a capital allocation answer, but I think it's a very important one. People in this space are attracted by by all the pain and we need we need to deal with this first. That's the first thing. And then you need to uh, attract the once you are feeling good, you attract more people who can work on the communications, on the transparency, on like, hey, we are currently not paying ourselves because that's what I mean with indeed breaking even. I think most of the people working here will not be paid and I'm not even talking about the volunteers. So like that's that's a first step. And then and communication, then, then you start communicating outward. You do, you really tell the people like this, this is what's happening. Um, you communicate well, and for that you need good communicators, you'll start attracting them. Um, then the point of ownership, I think, yeah, skin in the game is a very important one, and it's underestimated. Like, in that's the point that we were making earlier about like the, the token drops, et, et cetera. People just have this idea, and we are, a lot of people in the space are getting used to this, like, I deserve this token, this airdrop, why am I not getting it? And it's like, hello, excuse me, can, can we take a step back here? What did you do for this token? So we actually need to like make people more aware that like having skin in the game is a great thing. You have to do something to get something and then like we can divide the pie more honestly and transparently and fairly and but it's mechanisms it's all mechanisms again it's it's taking care of the people taking care of yourself taking care of the people around you second step and having the the right mechanisms to support you so that is my very long answer <laughs> i just want to clarify for kevin like what i'm talking about because we started to talk about common goods and public goods and um then you used the phrase dividing the pie but that's not what common goods are about common goods are about like i actually own this but not as my slice right this is a common hub or this is a common blockchain so like and and yeah so how do you think about ownership as part of this allocation process um i mean i guess my, the first place that my mind goes is not to ownership but it's to javi and lean for making this space available to us so th thank you I guess they're great. Um, it's it starts with one or two people who care that radiate outwards that want to be the change and um you know i mean i i almost put the question to them like how can we support you uh i don't put you on the spot but on the screen, the oh. the I like we're all like pontificating about different ways to solve it, and there's a fucking <laughs> QR code right here. Yeah, Just scan, it. scan it, send money to region, village, um, and you know we'll be proud to support you guys in the next Gitcoin round. And uh, I mean, I, I think I just have to hold the the sadness with you know the way things are, with my optimism for the the fact that we'll eventually solve them and or at least start addressing them. And uh, I, don't have, I don't think there's a clean, easy answer. And I think I um, appreciate you asking the question, though. Thank you. All right, go ahead, Eugene. Yeah, I'll jump in with, uh, I was wondering about with the kind of resources that you've covered uh, or the mechanisms that you've covered in the book, the other ones you've been hearing about as you've been talking about, are there any specific ones that you're most excited about 
actually seeing put out into the world. I know you mentioned like the cookie jar one in a different uh, panel, and that one gave me a lot of ideas of specific environments that can be like trialed in. Yeah. So I guess in this context, whether it's in the context of like supporting projects like Regen Village and everything that's going on here, or just more broadly from a cool mechanism perspective, anything you want to see? Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, there's 35 mechanisms in the book and there'll be 50 something in the next, uh, in the next book. And so like, I think we'll invest resources into building a taxonomy of mechanisms and sorting them by self similar attributes that they have, um, uh, areas of that taxonomy that I'm excited about. Uh, how can we take these crypto mechanisms and make them legible to the mainstream so that more the tar total addressable market will get bigger? That's an exciting category for me. Another exciting category is just simple mechanisms. I think that Gitcoin, like we went off the deep end with complexity, with quadratic funding and civil resistance, and oh my God, we have to like build this all on chain, and now it has to be private, like. Fuck. Uh, and like like simple mechanisms, like I don't know, Raid Guild's working on this thing called Cookie Jar, where just like if you're in a list of DAO contributors, you can pull a couple hundred dollars out every few weeks and like the and it's and like just leave a note about what you're using it for and um, just don't abuse it and you'll be on the list still. Like that's really great. You don't have to expense your web hosting or, you know, uh, buying pizza for people at the Commons Hub. Like that's a really like simple mechanism. So uh, bringing the mainstream is one category. I think uh, also simple mechanisms is another category. I'm really excited about mobile capital allocation experiences and, um, you know, what are the ways that we could just like emergently be uh, giving out money to people in the Regen community at the next Regens Unite event. I think that that would be cool um farcaster frames holy shit like we spend 15 minutes per quarter allocating capital to optimism or gitcoin if we're in optimism for a badge holder but like if we all spend two or three hours a day on social media what are the ways that we can embed public goods funding mechanisms into social media that's cool to me so there's a bunch of different areas that i think are excited exciting to sort of like pinch and zoom and to build into high resolution and um you know uh, it, it'd be cool to hear what other people are excited about too you, you're at metagov and you're sort of an explorer of the design space can i ask you really quickly like what, what are you excited about yeah, sure. I mean, just to riff off the cookie jar idea, I know you were mentioning in terms of like a cookie jar within a single ecosystem. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say thanks for coming. Uh, please grab a book on the way out. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. it would also be really interesting because I know there's more talk about like how do we coordinate research funding or certain uh, yeah. like big problems. How do we coordinate funding them together for multiple organizations? And actually, Cookie Jar might be an interesting mechanism when it's in such a niche space that actually all the potential eligible applicants are actually known and public actors. Um, but yeah, and just I, I feel like there's much more appetite for folks to come together and think about these ideas and actually iterate and experiment with them in the near future. So yeah, I'm super excited excited to just have this as like a coordinating function for people to be aware of just the landscape of options at hand and then just get it more on the minds of people who actually want to design and build them. Uh, I mean, I'm always like biased towards how do we get research funded or like public goods like this funded. And yeah, I'm hoping to, to collaborate with a bunch of folks here to experiment on that side. Yeah. Uh, and then my like my yes and uh, would be that like I know we talk a lot about, about like mechanisms and like um, I actually think that like the mechanisms will co-evolve along with the memes and the culture and the communities that apply them. And I, I think it's like important to be able to hold the duality between soft institutional things like culture and then like the hard institutional things like, like the mechanisms in there. And so um, I just want to remind uh, everyone that like the soft things really have an important part to play also as we explore these design spaces also. And, you know, I have a computer science degree, so I'm always going to speak in terms of mechanisms, but uh, the culture and the institutions are really important too. Uh, thanks, Eugene. Go ahead. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Um, I think you were just speaking to this a little bit, but maybe to take it to another level, I'm wondering how do you optimize for diversity of participation? I mean, how do we integrate the voices of people who can't be in this room or maybe aren't even on the internet? Uh, so I'm thinking about like indigenous voices and farmers, people who work on land, even just people who live in like blue collar contexts. Like how do we optimize for actual diversity of participation in these funding mechanisms? 
Yeah, that's a really uh, important question, especially as these things go uh, out of the uh, somewhat non-diverse like Web3 space and into the world, which is you know very diverse and it'll be more existential as we go out to the world. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is to work backwards from the outcomes, uh, to, to study your population and to work backwards from the outcomes that they really want. And like, don't lead with a solution, looking for a problem, looking for a community, really study your communities and work backwards from them, I think is an, an important thing to do. And like, we're literally programming our values into our money, right? This is like the whole, the whole thing. Um, and there is, and I'm a software engineer, so I'm guilty of this all also, but there's like a little bit of like, hey, we're a solution looking for a problemism, a problem, and like solutionism is the antithesis of, of what you're talking about. Um, and then the second thing that I'll say is that I'm really excited about Glenn Weil's vision for plurality, uh, his new book out called Plurality, which is, uh, uh, it's really very cool. I don't know how to even encapsulate like his vision, but one of the things that he talks about is building uh, capital allocation systems that promote a cooperation across social distance. And basically, uh, Gitcoin has put this into practice with our quadratic funding mechanism. Basically, if you and I vote only for the same grants, then it will dampen our matching multiples. Whereas if you and I come from different parts of the world and have different preferences, it will, and we, and then it'll, and, and we vote for the same thing, it'll amplify that expression. So basically, uh, algorithmically, uh, dampening filter bubbles and amplifying cooperation across social distance is a new tool that we have in order to promote diversity as a first principle. And I think that's cool. But I don't have all the answers. Part of what I'm doing here is creating a social space where people can come together and share the answers. And so if you're from one of those communities, then I want to amplify your voice. So come tell me where I'm wrong and we'll, we'll amplify that. W what do you think? Uh, I really like your first approach of starting by understanding the community and coming from an outcomes-based approach. I think that's a great answer. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Hi, Javi. What's up? Hey, good to be here. Javi to set the anchor for this space along with Lean and Regens Unite. Can we give them another hand up? Round of <laughs> Thank <applause>? you. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go. What do you got? So, yeah, it's so great to have you here and to have all of you here. And this is, we got the keys of this space a month ago. And so uh, I really also give big... Big shout out to all the volunteers, all the people who have contributed to furnish the place. Uh, there's been a lot of work going on, and indeed, this is a public good, right? So our goal is to run this as a common, as a DAO. Um, and so, yeah, so thank you so much for all the work that you've been putting, because I think like we haven't really figured it out yet, really, how to make this sustainable. I, my background is in Silicon Valley startups, Web 2.0, and so over there, you would raise millions and you know get. Uh, five, six figure salaries, six figure salaries, yeah, 100K, whatever. And when you work for the public goods, my goodness, this is so hard to get not even half of that and then pay the rent. And so I can see here, like most of the side events today at um, uh, FCC, like their budget is 50K a day. And you know, we for we try to do this with 20K a day. And even that is actually quite hard to, to put together the budget. So we need to keep on on working, so thank you for, for working on that. I wanted to talk about the, um, uh, a few things. Maybe first experience, um, first hand experience. Um, um, so I, I've been building like a, this platform called Open Collective um, to also help public goods uh, in communities uh, back in 2015, so it's been a while. And, and so I know how hard it is to actually get money for all of those communities. Um, one thing that I've experienced myself recently, I did an open source project openletter.earth, I was trying to get people to contribute to pay for the server bills, and uh, they were just uh, asking nicely for donation, and, and I had one donation a month at best. And then I did a simple change, which was actually at the end when they, when they signed the, a letter, I basically shared the equivalent of what you see at the bottom left there, which is the expense tracker, right? So that people can see, oh, it actually costs money. <laughs> oh, there is actually a human being who is actually paying for me. Um, hmm, maybe, maybe I can contribute, um, right? And I think, like, I, I'm a big believer also in the gift economy. There's a great book of, I don't know if you read it, uh, from Charles Eisenstein on sacred economics. Yeah. Right? A, better wor a Better World Our Hearts Know Is Possible, I think yeah. is the subtitle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a really great book as well. And, um, but 
to 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 get there, I think it's important, indeed, as Grace was saying, that we need really transparency. People need to know that hey, if you don't pay for it, somebody else is paying for it. And uh, if we really want a new world, we better pay for it ourselves. Otherwise, it's going to be dictated by whoever is going to pay, all right? Which is mostly, you know, petrodollar somehow, um, right? So. Um, so yeah, so just doing that was changed. Now I have a donation every day, uh, almost. And so that's a simple trick. Um, and then lastly, thank you so much because you are donating 15 books um, also for the region economy because you all have a wristband that has an NFC wallet on it. So if you scan it with your phone, you can see. Um, and uh, then you can earn some tokens. You already get five tokens for just registering here today, but you can earn more tokens by helping us clean the, the park in front, uh, helping here with the dishes and uh, cleaning up the space of the common. And then you can have ice creams, or you can have the book as well. That's another way, as another mechanism to allocate. That's, that's cool. And so you can pay not just with capital, but with your labor. Exactly. You can pay with the region Brussels token. Um, that's to me like a kind of a, a, a word that I want to see is to move from this monoculture of a single currency where you can be millionaire in, in dollars and then you have access to everything to a permaculture of many different currencies where I don't care how many dollars you have, no ice cream for you if you didn't contribute to the community. The power of go. ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, so, uh, thank you, Javi. That, that was beautiful. Um, I have a question for uh, We have, it's, it's 1.20 now. I, 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 I don't want to make you guys sit too much, so like maybe another 10 minutes we'll start to wind down the fishbowl and then just <laughs> start hanging out. Yeah, so, so we'll take like, we'll take like uh, your, your question still, but I had one little add-on question for, for you, Xavier, like, uh, and also for you, Kevin. Like, you put all the expenses on there, but what I was then immediately thinking of to make this allocation mechanism also better, um, it's, it shows like, oh, we almost raised 40,000 euros, you see the expenses, but if we would put the, the total of the expenses on it, and actually if we would pay all the contributors a basic salary, like we would probably be very much in the red, right? But is that, is, is it there or am I missing it? No. Yeah, that, that's why the goal was to raise 100k to be able to pay the contributors. Yeah, okay. So for that, and I'm kind of wondering, like, should we, is it a good thing to actually put that in the red or put something like, because right now it's like, oh, we're almost going to raise a goal. And I wonder psychologically, because you see this so often with like, we have these uh, Kickstarters, etc. But like, why do we need to reach the 100,000? Well, this, so I was wondering if you have a thought, if we need to make that even more. And it's it's also not just for this one, for, for in general, do we need to work on the scarcity mindset or is this exactly what we need to ex uh, avoid? It's for both of you. I quick answer quickly so I leave the space for somebody else. Uh, but you can see like the different kind of milestone to secure the space, to, have the, to pay for the food catering, then the car contributors, and then the contributors. So it's kind of different circles uh, for rewarding. But that's a good question. I have no bloody idea. And I think we need, to we and obviously nobody has figured it out really fully yet. Uh, so we need to keep on experimenting. So if you have feedback, please share. So I'm also very curious to hear your thoughts on that. We haven't even covered food and drink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes. The best way to uh, actually the best way to find out is to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have anything smart to add here. It's a hard problem, and um, <laughs> yeah, I I I hope to iterate the design space with you, Javi. Uh, go ahead. Oh, oh, sorry, Corey. Did you have something to add? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, we'll, we'll get to your question in just a sec. <laughs> Thank you. This is one of the people not getting paid right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a masochist. So I like to work for free. <laughs> I guess that's why I'm in the DAO space. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, there's a it's a, there's an interesting perception thing going on with the regen meme. I've noticed when you ask for funding behind event that has regen in the name people kind of like i think there's a bit of an association with like oh, okay yeah that's nice it's an impact event they're going to talk about like environmental stuff like it's nice but we need to think about our target audience and where they're going to be and uh, make sure that we get in front of them and i think where the money's really flowing in the space tends to be more around like DeFi. um uh 
and yeah, maybe like specific other topics, but usually when people think of regen, I don't think they're thinking of it as like a, a valuable investment for their events budgets. Um, and what I'd really like to do is like change the narrative around that and really like show that we're talking about serious topics in the regen village, which I guess has like, you know, it's very green branding. Um, it's very vibey. There's lots of plants. But I also want to make it clear that like we're trying to change systems for the better in a serious way. And it incorporates all the same topics actually that are being discussed in these other very well-funded events. Um, but somehow I don't think that's getting across. And unless you're like really on like an insider group also like within this meme, uh, like we're a young brand. Uh, we're kind of like, yeah, we're a little bit lesser known. Uh, we don't always even do the best job of branding, adding our branding ourselves behind this. <laughs> We realized, um, but that's also because we didn't really want to make it just about us. We want to make it like a collective um, event. Like we wanted to hold a space for this whole niche for the week to give like, yeah, to give space for these topics and these discussions to be held. Um, and yeah, so yeah, it's always a question of like, it just comes down to like marketing and branding and being perceived as like, valuable to invest in and um, I don't know sometimes I just think the regen meme is like it has more work to do to kind of tell that story um, so yeah I mean that's just what it comes down to for me for events budgets I think yeah I mean I think it's an excellent point um, I mean for those of you who are skilled at reading between the lines I think the Gitcoin I mean Gitcoin's pivoting in a couple ways from single mechanism to multi mechanism but like we're really leaning into this like pro-social regen impact stuff a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, uh, we, I think now are more focused on being a sophisticated capital allocation tool for DAOs to deploy their treasuries. And like, I just want to name that. I don't want to shy away from that. Um, but you know, my dream would be for it to be like a sophisticated tool that's worth your investment in the front and then it's regen in the back, you know, kind of like the regen mullet, uh, is kind of what I think that we're pivoting towards a little bit. Um, she's looking at my, at me from this angle and my hair and like, yeah, she's like, okay, I see it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, but I don't know. I just, I, I, I think that, um, you know, Gitcoin's VC funded and, uh, you know, when I, we have we have people who make six figures at, at Gitcoin and like I don't know I think that we're playing the accelerationist game and there's a contradiction in that with the social impact in some ways but there's also like it's also very like effective for pushing things forward I mean when the contrib when the contributors are empowered and hungry and you know everything that's it's, it's effective but uh, I don't know I just want to. I don't want to shy away from that when I speak in front of you all. And I just want to say that, like, I think there is a way for it to build like pro business and and like things that are good for the space and have like one percent for public goods or 10 percent for for region uh, baked into it. And that's kind of what the champagne glass of, of funding will be is uh, I think that we'll pinch off a little bit here and there for for our pro social stuff. And maybe that's how we'll solve it at scale. Anyway. I feel like, did you come up to comment on this or? I to come along this, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I feel like we keep stringing you along, yeah. but we'll do one, we'll do one, one more and then we'll get to it. Go ahead. Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Flip. I'm very new to all of this um, region thing. So I can, I also kind of jump uh, a little bit because I met someone here on HeathCC. He kind of convinced me to join the region village and I came to check it out. And I was actually expecting something really different. And I just want to comment on the branding thing. I was a lot of expecting something around forest regeneration, <laughs> you know, forests. There's, and 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 there's that. But what I see here is actually something uh, that is making me getting a little bit more interest on the space again. To be fair. Uh, I am someone that I'm um, very enthusiastic about Web3, about decentralization. I have my own projects. Uh, I'm a startup founder coming from traditional worlds, the Web2 world, SaaS, and so on and so forth. Always very keen about the decentralization, the power uh, of creating mechanisms that are automated and so on and so forth. 
And I've been lately been very cynic about the space because it's all about either meme coins or staking and restaking and re-restaking in layer one, two, three, four. There are more blockchains in layers than actually applications. <laughs> there's, uh, there's everyone just finding another way to move liquidity to someone else, uh, find someone else to push that liquidity and take them from them and then gaining from people everywhere around it. Everywhere around you see, um, I've become very, very cynic about the space. And actually, it's very interesting to see the type of conversations here, the type of crowd here. Uh, and just to comment on the regen thing and the branding, um, I don't know how, but yeah, I, I just want to share that, that from an external perspective, it does come across different, right? And coming here, uh, I, I will be, much more enthusiastically following many of the projects I see here. Uh, I will support on the Regen Village. Just wanted a, a quick tip. When you scan, I don't, ha I don't have my wallet on my phone, security reasons, just send me a payment link, just a click like that, an email, I will pay it later, I will definitely support it. So this small usability things can definitely increase the number of donations you will have. Maybe not immediately, but hey. Um, uh, stuff like that. But yeah, just to shout a kudos to all of you. And uh, maybe there's a lot of work to do on the regen branding, just to share my external thoughts to all of you. Um, I will probably see which, I saw the regen tipping stuff, like that a lot. We'll probably start cooperating on, on a few things. But, but just to say that, as someone that follows the Web3 space and crypto space since 2017, more active and less active and different things, I was becoming more and more cynical uh, about the space for the last few years, and and uh, it's very good to see a crowd like this. So, just want to share that. All right, we will stop stringing you along. Thank you for patiently waiting. Uh, what's up? Thanks. Hi. Uh, I'd like to sit here representing uh, the people who are doing region work on the ground planting trees, uh, building houses, and I'm probably not the only one in the room, but I'd like to stand here because it's the second region event that I'm attending, trying to find out, not being a tech, not coming from even IT knowledge, just uh, struggling with my phone and my computer, where can we cross this divide? Because there are organizations I know about in France, for instance, where you have thousands of communities which are registered, doing work, building community, uh, doing everything that we are talking about. And I sense, without being able to grasp it, that there might be mechanism here where we could, I, for instance, we bought a, a, a big land, few people, and I would be, ready to put that as a collateral somewhere in the scheme to get the snowballing effect or the, the champagne trickling down, but I don't grasp it. I, I don't know where to get it. So I'll read your book and I'll maybe go into another region event again, but I, I'm not yet able to um, yeah. get it together. So if there are people in the room that have ideas that could build yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the feedback. And, um, you know, I think it's like, um, I think one maybe fault to this space is that we're too meta about like coordination mechanisms and systems and everything like that and not on the ground touching grass and communing with the people that we serve. And so, um, you know, I think it's a good reminder to, to spend more time uh, actually, actually on at the object level stuff and so i see peop people in this room that i know are really good at that and i i hope to encourage more of that in the future yeah thank you and and it's it's a great question and i think I, the thing that we just heard before but also you are here and so many people are here and walked in and and do not indeed have these levels of knowledge and this is where why the commons hub exists 
Lynn, who's sitting there, like she came to me like two years ago, and she's like, "Chris, what what is a DAO? What is a DAO? Like, I I I know nothing. I know nothing, but we want to do this." And so now she's like, she's just like the, the DAO queen. She's she's doing it all. So <laughs> just like a little, yeah, not her plus for her age. She's just like the best. She's doing so much. Um, but that's that's how it starts. Like you bring people together in a space, and like uh, even if you're like, I don't know any of the technical things, you start helping out. You start like we need. Some some people to vacuum the floor here at the end we need some volunteers and then you just have a coffee yeah that's a real request and then at the end we just sit down and he's like okay well you were talking about like this thing but i see this metamask thing i have no idea how it works and you sit down and you just have some people i love explaining this stuff people can always ask me so just like slowly by coming to these spaces the, the knowledge will spread you will scale it and for that like yeah let's get physical you know like let's build physical hubs where we get together and face to face we share the knowledge that's how it grows as well for me i wanted to add that yeah. one yeah i mean i think the other thing that i heard in your question though is like we want to invite people and be inclusive about them teaching them the technology but eventually at scale hopefully this gets to a place where the mechanisms and the technology and the money comes to you without you having to be tech aware or anything like that. And I heard a little bit of that in, in your question and comment too. So uh, I think that we're not there yet, but uh, hopefully the movement will get there at some point. Let's um, grow. I, <laughs> oh, wow. I, I think, I think if we're going to end on a meme, it should be public goods are good. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> Fine, Jimmy. Let's grow. Uh, public goods are good. Yeah. All of them. Uh, hold on. So, uh, we got a couple announcements, and then we're going to break. Sage, I'll go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe briefly re repeat the question for the for the. Recording. Yeah. So the question was: uh, outside of grants, what are the use cases that we see the, for these for these mechanisms? And I and I think that the answer is like broadly speaking, I think that uh, as tokenization eats the world and blockchains become the substrate of the next financial system, everything, science funding nonprofit impact based work, uh, how financial markets work will all change, be changed by next generation capital allocation, just kind of like a non answer, but also like the biggest answer. And, uh, there's a chapter about that in the book. So Yay. thank you, Sejal. Um, before, before we, before we wrap, um, I just wanted to, uh, 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 uh on, did you want to come up and say a couple words about the design of the book? Yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I also want to spotlight you if you want to talk about it. Did, did you want to come up? <laughs> okay, so um, everyone uh, would love to welcome to the stage on who did all of the designs and illustrations for the work. I, I <laughs> made a, a conscious a conscious choice to uh, a lot of mechanism stuff can be very academic and very dry and we wanted this to feel more alive and on's work was essential to that so just wanted to ask you what was in your head and your heart as as we were going through this process and uh, if you could tell us a little bit about the illustrations that'd be great um, thank you so much for the well thank you thank you so much for the opportunity to work together yeah. can you guys hear her Hello. Oh. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to work together. It was really very interesting. And uh, yeah, I was uh, thinking how to represent um, this. Just hold it a little bit closer, please. Yeah, I was thinking how to represent the whole, um, uh, the mechanisms. And uh, I found a botanist, um, his name uh, Liedenmeier, and he was a Hungarian uh, theoretical biologist and botanist. And uh, he developed L system. Basically, uh, this system, a uh, mathematical framework used to model the grown patterns of plants and the organism. Basically, mm. he desc uh, described um, through mathematical model plants and living organism. And after I found, um, after I found also um, system tool uh, on GitHub, and I uh, generate uh, these yeah. plants. 
uh, in GitHub. And basically, this uh, book is like a generative art um, based on uh, L systems. And uh, also, I used AI. And the idea is it's like a network garden, uh, each of mechanism represented through plants. Well, this yeah. is, uh, and it will grow. <laughs> So yeah. let's grow. Jimmy yeah. strikes again. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think that the I really love the way the art came out and the way that it expresses a mechanism in a visual way that's consistent across mechanisms. And uh, it's inspiring for me to just page through the book and and see them. And so um, I think that your work really made this book shine. So thank you, on. Thank you also. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think uh, are we ending it there? I think I think we are ending it there. Um, Kevin, do you think um, do you still believe that um, public goods are good? Just I wanted to emphasize that. <laughs> wow, what a layup to end on! Public <laughs> goods are good. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I will. I, I think we're going to try to distribute. Okay, so there's 200 books. There's a bunch of socks. There's shirts. Uh, there's enough books for everyone. So please don't crowd the the book area and. Uh, Spread the message and like just do some capital yeah. allocation. Right? If you wouldn't mind retweeting my tweet about the book launch, that would help just more people who aren't here reach it. And uh, if you feel inspired after reading the book, please post in the Telegram channel or please tell your friends about it. And um, thanks for coming. Thanks for showing up. Your participation is, is proof that you care. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank Bye. you, Kevin.